Cool. Okay, guys, welcome to the show. Um, so we've got a couple of topics lined up for today. Um, first, just introductions. Daniel next to me, and uh, we've got Richard here below us. Um, so the first topic of the show was um, the news category, and we decided to talk about uh, tobacco control sues FDA. I've got the I've got the actual article here on vaping 360, and just to to read the first little bit here, anti vaping groups are suing the FDA to push the agency to enforce its original deadline for all vaping products to go through pre market review. The original deadline was August 8, uh, 2018. So they pushed that now to, um, what is it? Uh, I think it is 2022. Yes. Okay. And um, now the groups that are suing, is it this uh, American Academy of Pediatrics, Maryland chapter, American Cancer Society, um, Cancer Action Network, American Heart Association, American Lung Association, Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, and Truth Initiative. So, are they saying here that they want to bring the original date of the PMTAs back to August um, 2018 after the FDA has said, hey, we're moving that up to 2022? Correct. Um, I looked up another article on this. Uh, it's an article on a website called Health Day, News for Healthier Living. Uh, I looked at it from this side simply because it's, it's not a vaping site. So it was going to report it on a more kind of, you know, not from a vaping industry angle. And there, there are several issues that come up here. Uh, the first one uh, they've said, According to the groups, the FDA's decision to delay the review means that currently available e-cigarettes and cigars can continue to be sold without information about their health risks or any scientific evidence to support claims of public health benefits, which is obviously rubbish. They are saying there's no scientific evidence that vaping is less harmful than smoking. There's no scientific evidence that has come out of the FDA review process, but that doesn't mean that there's no scientific evidence whatsoever. So that I think is something that, that the FDA are going to probably uh, cite in, in their uh, testimony before the court. The, the second um, aspect that they bring up here that says the lawsuit also warns that the FDA's decision to delay the review of e-cigarettes and cigars will hinder the development of the science needed to understand and to educate the public about which products actually do promote smoking cessation and how they can be marketed without exposing young people to unnecessary risk. Which again is not true. Part of the reason the FDA has delayed this whole process is to give themselves, the FDA, and the industry more chance to conduct the necessary research into the products that they can provide and produce scientifically sound and peer-reviewed and correctly compiled and cor with the correct terminology uh, that they can produce this body of evidence when they go about assessing e-cigarettes. So it's not hindering the development at all. It's allowing more time to get a more accurate uh, picture. Of, of the totality of, of harms that, uh, that e-cigarettes um, contain. Uh, then there was another one. Um, yeah. It says, their lawsuit also says that the FDA broke rules requiring public input on the decision and offered no meaningful justification for ripping a hole in the statutory framework by exempting for more than half a decade newly deemed products from pre-market review. Now this to me raises an interesting issue about precedence. When a new product comes on the market, do you ban it until it's proved safe or do you allow it until it's proved unsafe? That is the central question that, that is at issue here because 
we had this when cell phones first came out. There, there were scares that they were going to cause brain cancer and that the, the radio waves from the phones would heat up your brain and brain tumors and this, that, and the next thing. They didn't ban the product until it was proved safe. They allowed it until it was proven unsafe. And they, they conducted ongoing research into it while the products were actually being rolled out on, on the market. So I think those are, th are three areas where the FDA is going to, to have very strong counter arguments. What these groups are saying as well is that by rolling back the review process by four years, the FDA is not pr protecting the youth, which of course is, is rubbish. The, these are age restricted products. And Gottlieb in his response said that the FDA would prior to the 2022 cutoff date would be taking action against products that are being marketed to kids or being sold to to underage kids. So I think it's it's a very very flimsy case that they that they've got. I I just don't see it succeeding in in any sort of meaningful meaningful way. I don't know what you guys think on that. Yeah, I, I just don't see it working because it's, like you said, the only the only way around is to just outright ban everything because one of the big reasons why it was pushed back is because they didn't realize how many applications they were going to get, um, which was just pre-market approval applications and they couldn't work through all the paperwork. Um, they didn't realize that, that that is how big the industry is in the US at least. Um, and I mean, they, they shoot themselves in the foot because one of the things is, they couldn't work through everything. So everyone said they're still waiting um, and that they're not sure what's going on. It was pretty gray area after August 8th. And um, then they pushed the dates back three, I think it was about three times before they pushed it back to um, 2022 because they couldn't work through all the paperwork. They didn't have enough resources to do it. So I, I personally, the only option is if, if they win the case, they have to ban it outright because they still don't have the resources to go through all those applications. They, they didn't realize the enormity of the task. The IQOS application, FDA application, is 2 million pages. <laughs> it's a 2 million page document. Yeah. And I mean, and that, that, that's coming from a big company. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of the, the big, big tobacco companies that were going to get into vaping or that bought vaping would have done the same thing. So you can imagine how many papers would have been out there or like how big these papers were. Like, I, don't, I don't know about the smaller companies filling in the same due diligence or the same amount of paperwork, but still. They won't. But I mean, how long is that FDA committee going to take to read a two million page do document? <laughs> I was trying yeah, exactly. to do the math now while you guys were talking. I'll see if I can figure it out. I think if we go like, what, what's it? Let's say, because it's, it's, it's going to be pretty like jargon heavy, right? So we, we're talking at least five minutes a page. And that, that doesn't even mean you understand it. That means you've just gone over it. Yeah, um, you just literally just brushed over the page yeah just look over the page. A, a lot of it will be reference stuff what what, what iquos will do is is they will submit every single academic paper as as part of their submission and what they'll do it'll be that much that they've actually written themselves and then they'll say refer paper 2008 mm -hmm. they'll they'll give the isbn number and that paper will be you know 3000 pages yeah and my, okay my so thing just, is just check my math yeah here. Just check my math here. So five minutes a page, right? So we times uh, two million by five, okay? Which means yep. that's 10 million. So that gives us the amount of minutes. Then we um, divide that by um, 60 to 60. give us the hours. Yep. And then we divide that by eight to give us the days. No, 24, excuse me. Well, they're not going to read it 24 hours a day, right? Yeah. So, so I, think, I think you can... You can divide by eight. Eight will give yeah. you work days. Yeah. yeah that, that was like 20,000. 20,000 days. Yes. <laughs> That's work if days. one probably, person, and, right? That's if one person, so, you know, you, it's probably not one person reading the document, but 
It'll it'll be no, a committee but, of like twelve people. Yeah, but they're all going to have to read it though. That's they're the thing. They're all going to have to read but it. You can, exactly. You can't take out excerpts and say, okay, you read page <laughs> one to five hundred thousand. I'll read five hundred one thousand to <laughs> one million. Right? Do you um, think? And then, yeah, you're saying that, that that doesn't even take into like account peer review, right? Because they're, they're going to want some kind of independent um, organization to go over it. Um, I would think something like the World Health Organization to go over it or um, probably not the World Health Organization because I think they, they're four uh, alternatives, right? If I'm not mistaken. So, so they're not, they, that's not independent to them. They're going to have to go with something like that against it and then legislature, legislators have to go over it. They're never going to make it. Like. But, the, but then there's like presentations as well. So all the iQuest guys come in. I mean, the whole you know, Philip Morris' team is there. And the first senator at the microphone says, okay, let's start. Halfway down page one, <laughs> can you please provide clarification for, for this point? <laughs> they have to order a lot of coffee by the time they get to page two million. I can tell you that. Hey, I, I don't see them going through that. I don't see them reading it thorough enough. No, it won't be. And And... It makes you wonder, so what's the options? Either they're just going to say, okay, we're not going to approve it. There's too much paperwork here. We don't have the time. They'll, and they'll, provide, it. they'll provide an executive summary, probably yeah. like a four-page bullet-pointed executive <laughs> summary of, of the main findings. And the, <laughs> the committee will go on that. They're, they're not reading two million pages. Uh, yeah, I really think they got million. trolled. A hundred percent think they got trolled. <laughs> <laughs> but that, it's a tactic, right? Drown them in paperwork. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It's a legal tactic. So, yeah, there's no way they're going through that. But it, it does. You know, the, the encouraging thing is that everybody always hates regulators. It does, you know, I spoke to uh, some of our guys that work in the, in the clean air um, environment, and uh, they were the people that were passing the new Air Quality Act. And they said, every public meeting, you've got the industry suits come in and you've got the civil society guys in their Jesus sandals with their hemp shirts come in. And the air quality guys will stand up and say, okay, we propose that the air quality level should be there. And civil society gets up and <laughs> walks out. <laughs> they're saying no you guys are in the pocket of industry these air quality standards are far too lenient and they walk out so now it's the industry oaks left so they stand up and they say well okay what about if we shifted a little bit towards the you know the civil society side and industry gets up and walks out because <laughs> they say you know it's in the pocket of of the tree huggers and the and the environmental freaks so they all go and have coffee outside and nobody's just speaking to anybody else and that they kind of view that, they expect it, and they view that as an indication that they've sort of got the balance right when everybody hates them. Now, everybody hates Scott Gottlieb, so <laughs> he must be doing something sort of, not right, but he, he at least is in the middle. You know, the anti-smoking groups yeah. hate him, vaping groups hate him, Big Tobacco hates him. So he's, he's kind of in the middle on, the, on this, so he, he can take that as a consolation. I, I tend to agree. There's always got to be some kind of compromise from both ends. Um, so I, if he's the hated one, then then they're definitely doing something right. They, they're on the right path. I mean, besides the other part of it where he wants to ban flavorings or the FDA is what. The, the big thing about Gottlieb and where I agree with Wayne that he, he wants to write his place in history is that he's the first guy to challenge the status quo. I mean, if, if you look at how Public Health England and the Royal College and, you know, all the European bodies are looking at it, their thing is smoking is going to continue. We will discourage people, but it's not going to stop them. Smoking is going to continue. People will smoke. Then they'll switch to vaping or they'll switch to, you know, uh, heat not burn or they'll, go, they'll give up totally by switching to patches or whatever. But it, it works on the assumption that you're not going to stop tobacco. People are going to carry on smoking, even in, in lesser numbers, but they're going to carry on doing it. And it's just, it's a problem into perpetuity that you live with. Gottlieb is the first guy to say, let's take nicotine out of cigarettes. People stop smoking then. If they stop smoking, there's no reason for them to vape. There's no reason for them to take patches. He wants to kill. Nic nic the others have accepted nicotine dependency as part of the human condition, and they just live with, with that going forward. 
Gottlieb is the one that says he wants to be renowned as the guy that killed the whole industry. Now, I don't think he's going to get that right. There's, there are too many vested interests. But nevertheless, it, it differentiates him from those that have gone before him. Yeah, this was this was a shocking part of the Vaping 360 um, article that I read. Um, you know, and they spoke about this here is is what what he was aiming to do, or um, you know what 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 they were aiming to do. But um, immediately, I just thought about how many people would be you know affected here. I mean, you know, pharma, tobacco, vaping, everything, everything will be affected here. I think um, there'll be products as well, just normal products. I think there's pesticides with nicotine and stuff in, in it as well. So that's, uh, there's, there's a whole lot of industries that will be affected here if they go that route. So I wonder why he would go for that so strongly. You know what I mean? The, the thing is that, that everybody overlooks is that everybody's happy with the status quo. The anti-tobacco groups get to preach their, their anti-tobacco message. Smokers still get to smoke. Vapors get to vape. Big Pharma gets what it wants. Tobacco gets what it wants. You know, everybody's kind of happy with, with nicotine just, just carrying on. Gottlieb wants to kill the whole thing entirely. So he's putting everybody's livelihood at risk, even, even the, anti, the anti-smoking and the anti-tobacco groups. I mean, they, they, their jobs are from opposing this. So now by shaking everything up and wanting total change in the industry, he's, he's going to become a marked man. But, you know, if Trump doesn't last beyond what's it, 2020 is, is, the, is the next election. 2020, then, yeah? Yeah, then Gottlieb doesn't either. I mean, you can be sure the next Dem that comes in is going to appoint a Dem uh, representative who's going to go back to the Dem thing of, we accept nicotine, we put out billions of dollars worth of public campaign, stop smoking, but we just accept that people will continue and we accept tobacco and we accept farmer and everybody else because it's a comfy industry and everybody makes a living from it my, my my main concern right is we know it's not just nicotine that's causing the addiction um we know that there's um antidepressants in it um also i think not too long ago i read a study that said you know light cigarettes are actually worse for you than um that then regular unfiltered cigarettes because of the way the the airflow from the holes in the filter heats up the the um, coal or the the tar in it. So um, um, don't quote me. That's just I read something about that, but it's not. Um, that's not one hundred percent what they said. That's more or less the gist of it. But um, basically, uh, my concern is like how do how they're going to remove the nicotine. Because otherwise you have to ban it outright. So, so it's either ban the cigarettes outright or tobacco is still going to thrive. Nicotine or no nicotine, they're going to find a way to make it addictive, right? They're just going to work within a different framework. Um, so I, I don't even see it hurting an industry. I just see it changing an industry. They just find it a different way to get people to smoke. He seems very confident that they have the scientific methodology to be able to to reduce nicotine, but... You know, it's like Formula One. You can bring out as many regulations as you like about bodywork and wings and brakes and engines. The engineers find a way around it. You know, they, mm. I mean, they've got wings that flex on the straight and, you know, provide more drag and less drag depending on the condition that the car's in and so on. The engineers are very, very clever guys. And Big Tobacco will find a way to put something that's addictive in there. Even if it's not nicotine, it'll be something that, that hooks you and, and keeps people on it so yeah it's a, it's a difficult it's a very difficult one but Gottlieb yeah. seems confident he can he can pull it off now I'm sure you can pull off no nicotine um, I've got I've got no doubt about it I just don't know about not yeah, making alter- people smoke you know it's the alternatives uh, you know. yeah we'll be hooked on alternatives <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> The, um, the Vaping 360 article um, talks about dueling. I don't know if you, so on the article itself, I mean, this is now deviating a little bit from the topic, but um, it's quite funny. Like while they're talking about dueling and, um, you know, this woman and that's going on about it in schools and, and how it's affecting the youth and blah, blah, blah. Vaping 360 has got this huge dual banner on the side advertising it 
<laughs> that was quite funny. Um, but I don't know if you've seen the, um, there's this video out on YouTube where they've got uh, a teacher and, um, you know, of course, smoking is, is not allowed at school and, and so is vaping and I think that's good. Um, however, um, kids are not smoking anymore. They're bringing these little jewels in and um, effectively they can get, um, they can get their little nicotine kick without smelling like cigarettes. You know, if, 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 cause I started smoking when I was 16 years old and you know, if that option was there for me as well, um, then I probably would have done exactly the same. You know, the article also talks about this, there being little evidence to show that these kids have started vaping, um, without smoking, you know? Um, so that, that was quite nice to read, but yeah, it, it, it was strange that they put this here, this, this portion was, I mean, um, it's, it's got not, it doesn't have that much to do with what's going on in this article. Yeah. But it's, in, it's interesting as well that the only brand they mention, I mean, these, these are, are anti-smoking groups, right? The only brand that they mention by name is the only brand that isn't owned by Big Tobacco. Yeah. Which is the jewel, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. they say... Yeah. Dueling is the problem. These are, anti these are anti-tobacco groups. Big tobacco, each and every one of them have got their equivalent of the jewel, but none of those are named. Mm -hmm. The only one that's named is the, is the rival to big tobacco. Yeah, they, they don't go after blue or any of those ones, you know? Yeah, or Voos or, you mm -hmm. know, any, any, of the, uh, any of the big tobacco brands. So it's, it's just interesting that, you know, are they revealing something there about you know their agenda going going into this that they they go after everything except the big tobacco brand i mean i don't know it's it's just it was an interesting revelation put it that put it that way yeah i didn't even point. I know. yeah it, it's 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 a fair point but I'm, i mean the jewel is one of the most popular like devices in the, in the states like it's getting I, I almost want to say it's getting more people off smoking than vaping, like like normal box mods, you know. Um, if if I see the popularity of it, and I, I'm like I'm not gonna lie, like I, I bought a small little like device. This is a pod system, but it's refillable. Um, and you put the nicotine salts in it, 20, 20 milligrams, and you hoy, like you got the rush, the satisfaction's done, and it's it doesn't. If I hold this in, right, there's like no, there's virtually no smoke, so I can vape this indoors, and no one will know. As long as I can just hold my breath long enough, you know. Yeah, I saw this on um, the vaping. Do you even vape, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I saw this on some of the other vaping shows that I watch, you know, and how things have changed. Of course, those are American shows. And, um, you know, a half a year back, everybody was talking about box mods and um, DNA chips and blah, 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 and drippers. And now... You've got all these big oaks sitting there with these little jewels, you know, like sucking their little jewels and talking about Nick salts within six months time. It, it must be pretty revolutionary because I never expected that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, but it's, that, it's what's cucumber, right? Is it one of the flavors? Is it cucumber mint or something? And the mango, like people kill for it. Like they're like, it's the greatest mango ever. Like, I think there's a whole dedication, like a forum dedicated to cloning uh, jewel pods. It's, it's pretty big. I, I don't get that, the whole jewel thing. I mean, I know people are turning to them and really enjoying them, but I just, I, I want a decent cloud. I mean, I started on a, on a, on a cigar like that blew out of just a tiny little puff of, of vapor and I it just didn't do it for me yeah I have to be honest um, there's just a, a lot more satisfaction in in the cloud you know um, however I'm with Daniel here that I'm interested it's now at that point that I'm interested I want to give it a go you know um, so I have a, I've seen a couple of, of, of um, devices being advertised here and there on, on, you know, on the shops, 
in the shops, but I'm not a hundred percent sure which one to go for. Yeah. I, I prefer something I can put my own thing in because I DIY, I want to be able to put my own juice in and make my own flavors. Um, I think for me, it's just figuring out like how much flavor is needed in these. Cause, cause it's not like it's a flavor horse. Um, I get like, if I put in grand slam and yeah, I get a hint of coconut biscuit. Like almost like it's like it's there, but you've got to look for it really hard. Um, so I, for me, I'm also looking at like how I can DIY for it with Nick Salts. Yeah, that might change the whole industry, eh? Might change everything. Like uh, Joel was saying just in the one of the other episodes that that is one of the most revolutionary things that's happened to vaping in the last couple of months, you know? Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about... Um, a little bit more about some of the gear that we've gotten in. I'll kick off with with what I've gotten in. Now, let's talk about the problem first. The problem here for me was um, just the time, you know, when you spend, you know, you spend a lot of time thinking about and being, you know, inspired by flavors or whatever, what recipes you want to develop. So then you come up with a basic idea, uh, chasing a profile, um, you know, on what flavors you want to combine together in specific ratios, okay? Then you mix that up and um, you, you know, you put it in a bottle and you shake it up and you put it in the closet and you have to wait. You know, if it is a custard, you're waiting 15, 10 to 15 days, you try it as, as it goes. But, you know, you're waiting a half a month um, to get to the final product. And then if, um, you know, it's a little bit easier to do that with fruits, you can already have the next day you can have a good idea of, of where fruit is going and how it's blending, right? So with fruits, it's not a problem, but with custards, um, with creams and, um, I would say, you know, with uh, bakeries as well, of course, you know, all of them take a long time so that, you know, to develop. So I lose focus quite quickly. Um, you know, if I'm inspired by something now, I want to, you know, get to the final product pretty quickly. So um, the only thing I could do or, or think about was to um, increase the, the time, you know, it takes to steep up a product. So I got one of these guys over here. This is the, the Nightcore um, <clears throat> heated stirring plate. And um, so I knew from the start, I'm not going to get a you know, completely um, time steep product after about eight hours of spinning it. So I know that um, all I wanted was, you know, and that's why I spoke to, to Richard about is to get it at least at uh, between a 60 and a 75% steep um, stage so that I can within a day of, of spinning um, and stirring, I could get an idea of where this recipe is going, if it's working or not, because, you know, that would almost be like you waiting a week and trying one of the recipes that you mixed up and then, you know, vaping it and, and you know, thinking, hey, hang on, the strawberry is a little bit too prominent here. I might go down with the strawberry on the next, you know, variation. So you can already get, find those little problems, tweak them. Now, the other thing that I've done is I've, um, so I mix up every single night now. I vape about between 15 and 20 mils of juice. So I mix 20 mils of juice um, a day. I'm trying to get into that iteration of doing it daily. There's some days that, you know, I, I just sort of grab some of my commercial juices if I was busy the night before, but I'm trying to get into a, a stage where I'm, mixing up 20 mils, letting it stir overnight, you know, at uh, room temperature, 25 degrees. I'll talk about, you know, some of the features on this thing and uh, trying it out the next day, you know, throughout the day while I'm working, when I get back home, I know what adjustments I can make, spitting that up and the next day trying out that new variation, you know, it makes your iterations a whole lot smaller. So you can produce a, a recipe faster. That's, that's the whole idea. And I think it does that, or I wouldn't say I think, you know, I, um, I, I believe that if you are doing, if you are developing recipes, not necessarily developing recipes commercially, right? I don't think this is a, a product that you should be using 
for commercial juice. But if you're developing recipes that you want to put online for other people to try and enjoy, you know, this is, this is a system that can help you get them out faster, especially if your interests are more into uh, bakeries, creams, and desserts and custards. Okay. Some of the features on it. Now the original plate warmed up to 75 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> that's, that's insane. Um, if, if you had to touch that plate accidentally, if it was at that heat, you know, or anybody else while it was stirring, cause then, it, you know, you, you would stir and walk away. You walk away from this product. You go and do your thing. You come back after four or five hours and you know, you have it close to done. So, you know, that's, that's quite dangerous. So I, I think what they've done, and this is also another thing that Richard told me is that they've reduced the, the total heat that it can go up to, to 45 degrees. So it's a little bit safer, I guess. I would never go that high though, because as soon as you go that high, it would impact, you know, the nicotine and some of the volatiles, um, some of the, the alcohols and stuff in the, the flavorants will start seeping out. <clears throat> So what I do is I keep it on its lowest setting, which is room temperature. I think that's below 25 degrees. And, you know, I spin it. I, I've got two, um, I've got two of, of these beakers as well. And, you know, normally I spin in this. This is a 50 mil beaker. And then I would literally just put the other beaker over. Because, of course, I don't want any dust particles or something to drop in there because it's open, right? You can put like a, you can put anything else over it at the top, but you know, I'll just, I just do that. So at least I know there's no dust particles and stuff falling in there and that's absolutely fine for DIY. Of course you can't do that for anything commercial, but yeah, I a hundred percent recommend this for people that are developing recipes. This is their hobby. They wanted to bring recipes out, uh, you know, for the masses to try and comment on and, and, um, pretty much DIY. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for me, like the reason why I find that thing pretty cool is, um, so I used to batch my juice as well. I used to try and doing the, the whole thing where I'd make like six different iterations at a time, steep it, try them, see which ones I liked or what I liked about it and, and try and take it out of there. And yes, it, that's quick. It would still take about a month if you, if you do batch, because even though you've done six versions, you want to try different ways and then you batch another six. Um, so I was doing it that way for a while. And what I realized is, uh, I, it, it's a, it's, first of all, it's a hell of a lot of bottles you go through just to batch something. And I don't have the storage space to keep batching bottles cause I don't just work on one recipe at a time. I work on a couple. Um, so for me, that thing's pretty interesting cause you can get a ballpark figure and from there you can, you can adjust. So you could do, you could say do one, two recipes and then move on to the next day, adjust again kind of thing. So I, I, I do like that device. Um, it's pricey, but I, th I think it's worth it if, you, if you're into mixing for like um, any, any type of reci recipe development, I think it's worth it. Um, it doesn't mean you don't test your juice later on, you know, like and still let it steep the normal way. Yeah, um, it is expensive. You know, I can't tell you how many times I had this in my cart and then just removed it and had it in my cart and just removed it and had it in my cart, just remove it, you know, until I finally bought it. Um, originally before Nightcore brought this out, I started investigating where I could get um, a, a heated stir plate from, you know, a supplier here in, in Gauteng somewhere. And I did find a couple of places that, that have them, but of course they, they for labs, you know what I mean? Um, mm. it's, it's laboratory stuff. And you I mean, I asked them for quotes because they don't even put the prices of those units, um, on the websites. And I got some of the quotes back, but you're looking at, uh, about 13, 14,000, 11,000, <laughs> 5,000. That's, that's the closest thing. I, I think I got one down to about 5,000, um, that I was even at that point considering, because I like the idea and concept so much. And then when this came out, you know, it was still a little bit steep. I mean, you know, a thousand seven, or th I think it's a thousand. I think when it came out, it was a thousand seven hundred and now it's a thousand five hundred. So yeah, I finally did it. I'm happy I did it. Yeah.
I'm definitely interested in in getting one. Maybe not now, but sometime in the future. When you ask for a quote, they say, "If you have to ask, you can't afford it." (laughs) (laughs) Most of my people just order. (laughs) They have equipment. Yeah. So um, the next thing. Daniel, you you have to show off some of your stuff from Bayface. Right, yeah. Okay, so I went a bit ham. Um, I, I don't know why. Like I just I went like crazy, bought everything that I that I liked. So I didn't hold back this time. So I think uh, first up is um, I was looking for a new like bottom feeder, and I heard like the the Flav. Um, so I've got the RSQ, but I was looking for a new RDA. Um, so I got the Flav, I think it's the Flav 24. Um, it's a single coil, nice little single coil. What I like about this is I can I can squonk and it doesn't overdrip. It's like one of the few ones that I'm not sitting with like a pool of juice around the base of it. Um, so I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. Like the flavor is pretty good. Like it's on point with the Hadley. Um, and then I bought this bad boy, which... I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Spruza or something. Yeah, Spruza or Spruza, but it's the Limitless um, Spruza. Spruza, which is also like an interesting little squonk device. It's got a, a little bottle here that you put in. So you slide this glass back, put your juice in, and then if you want to squonk, you just push this down. So it looks like this, yeah, and then you just push this down and it squonks the juice up, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, I like it because it was stabilized wood obviously. Um, and then on here, I got the Nudge 24, which I've got, I've got the Nudge 22 now and the Nudge 24. And I've, I've got the 24 thinking it was single coil, bought it, found out it's dual coil. Um, and I'm not a big fan of this one. I'm a big fan of the, the small one though. So um, this will be up for sale pretty soon because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not enjoying it so much. <laughs> yeah, Steven said the uh, same. He doesn't dig his 24. Yeah, I know this 24 is like, it's too airy for me. It reminds me a lot of like the Crichton. Um, it's a very airy cloud bros, needs like 100 watts and a couple of aliens in there, um, which isn't my style of vaping, obviously. So I feel like if I keep it, it's just going to, I'm going to end up not using the mod because it's going to sit here. And I like it matchy matchy. So um, I've got another uh, RDA on the way. Um, just, and then... Just shut that up, yep. one up close though, because <clears throat> I hold it in my hand. We would have probably bought exactly the same one if I bought that one. Yeah. Also oh, like, yeah. There's, there's a teal version of that as well. Like a yes. turquoise teal one. Yeah. I, I like the purple and I like the, like, I like seeing the wood in it because a lot of them were just like this whole resin panel. So I, I, there's, a, there's nice details in it. Um, it's pretty, pretty nice device. Um, hopefully I keep it for long and don't sell it for something else, but. I'm I'm digging it. Um, it it gives nice flavor. It, it hits hits well enough on um, the other devices I tried, um, and it, I think it goes up to like 80 watts or 90 watts. I'm not I'm not too certain. And it's touchscreen, which is weird. But. Yeah, but how did did your wife go with you um, to vape fest? Oh, good. Obviously, uh, obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> I got this, didn't I? So no, no. <laughs> Um, and then what's it? Okay. So I got the pulse as well, which I'm, I'm quite impressed with. Um, I was looking for like another squonker. Um, I'm waiting for the regulated pulse, but I got the, the unregulated one with like a nice, uh, 2700 battery in here. Um, and then I'm messing around cause I still don't know how to figure out if the batteries are flat, which is the only like schlep and I don't have another device to check the batteries. So, I'm I'm trying to work on timing to figure out if I can, you know, do a timer. I'm not sure how people check for um, like battery flats on a Mac, but it just uh, it, get, it just when just when dies. It, yeah, when it starts disappointing you, you know, you know <laughs> that the battery is flat. Dude, I'm like I'm so worried. I run the battery down to like no more volts, and then I can't charge it up again. So I'm like, I'm, uh, that's the only part that I'm, I'm skeptical about. But then I got the Nudge 22 on here. Now this I'm a fan of. It's a proper single coil um, setup. It's got like the airflow here and, and it comes with two caps. It comes with a cloud cap and a flavor cap. Um, and then I got this like really nice uh, 
Dalrin, no, what's it, Resin Drip Tip, which I'm pretty sure this is from Bumblebee because I think I bought this from the Vape Guys, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the only thing about this one is it's tough to get off. Like once I get this cap on, I, I can barely pull it off. So it, it's a bit tight. I've taken the O-ring off as well, but I'll figure it out. I might have to take the other O-ring, put it back on and take the bigger O-ring off. Um, but I've got another Hadley. Loose, right? Yeah, I guess. So it's not sliding all over the place, but it's such yeah. a hassle to just take it off and check. Um, and then I got a, a Hadley, which is like quite interesting. And um, uh, it's, it's got to be a clone, but it looks better than the Hadley I had, which was the SXK. Um, so I'm, can't, like, I'm not sure if ever since they stopped selling it, they're using like proper grade material on the clones. But it's a, this is a better clone than what I had. Um, and it's got like the silver, so it looks like closer to the authentic than what my SXK version did. Uh, oh, right. Um, also got panels, right? This is the original panels. I replaced them with the dark blue. Then I got this limitless pulse, which is like refillable pod system. Let's talk about that little thing right there. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Let me see if it's on. Yeah, okay. So, it, it heat, it, wow. So, it actually, it's, it's activated by a pull, of course, like, like a jewel, yeah. right? And yeah. um, so just give it another tuck. That is future. Hey, look at that. <laughs> That's everything. Did I, did it, it's got a stealth <laughs> mode as well that doesn't turn the lights on. So it's like, believe you, yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. Um, but it's like, it, I, I'm going to play around a bit. I put normal juice in just to give it a go because um, I have some 6040 juice lying around. Um, so I, I put that in first and then I tried it with some Grand Slam just to check if it could take thicker juices. Um, and then it, it doesn't take thicker juices very well. So just keep it to like 50, 50, 60, 40, but nicotine salts is going to work well in here. And then the disappointment of them all is I bought this as well for nicotine salts, which is the new AIO, the Joytech um, Ego AIO. I filled it up and then I put it on like a bookshelf in my lounge. I've got this like bookshelf that's, not high, it's like, yeah, but fits me. Put it on there, put my other mod down. And as I put my mod down, I bumped it and it fell off the bookshelf, shattered all over the place. And I had like two hits of it. So I was so bleak when that happened. Um, so now I'm looking for a replacement glass and I can only find, I think, two places. I believe Vape King sells it and some other, I think, eSiggies.co.za. Um, How much did so you pay for that unit, man? This is like, I paid at Vapefest 240. 240 so, bucks for that unit. 240 bucks. Obviously, I'm going to take it because it's like really cheap. Um, and I think I paid 300 for the limitlets. It was some special, which is, it comes with another refillable pod. Um, so I think these are about 300 bucks, but you put your own juice in. So, uh, but 240 for the, the AIO. So I was a big fan of the old AIO. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to get this one. This is the new one. Um, and it takes like a small little coil head. I can show you because there's no glass. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, it. You, get, you get the insides like bare bones. Apparently, it changes lights as well, which I haven't figured out how to do. No. Anyway, it's got like a light that lights up and it apparently goes blue and red. Um, haven't got there yet. Still getting there when I get new glass. Um, but it takes these like really small little coil heads. I don't know if you can see that. It looks almost like a cigarette, like really small cigarette bud. Um, and the coil heads aren't bad at all. Like it, it sucks up the juice. Um, I got like some free international juice when I bought the Spruza. Um, it's some kind of mango ice, uh, which wasn't too bad. It like works quite well, um, which I think this is international, but it's, it looks like this. Um, but yeah. I don't know what five plus one mixed flavor is. I just saw this now, but I don't know what five plus one mixed flavor means. Like if anyone, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, man, so, that yeah. looks like you yeah. had a, a grand time at vape face, right? Obviously. Cause you know, if the wife's not there, then the wallet comes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, was it bigger than last year? Um, no. So if we, when I talk about vape face, Okay, sure. There was a lot of people there, um, but I do think last year's one was better. Um, I think I mentioned this a few times. I'm a little disappointed in um, the juice selection. 
Um, this is like not to offend anyone. I'm just, there was so much juice on ice there. Like I, th- I think it's also like the big international guys all came. Um, they all came with some kind of fruit mix on ice. So like 90% of the juice that was for sale was some kind of fruit concoction on ice. And 70% of that was mango and something on ice. Um, there's a lot of mango on ice. A little disappointing. Um, I'm not a big fan of mango. There's, I think, one. I think I found one juice now that I like that's a mango, um, which I won. So I don't know if it counts, but, you know, I found one juice that I like that's mango. Not a big fan of mango and like 70% of that 90% was mango. I kind of miss the the old days, you know, where um, you had like all this new juice, like profiles that haven't been done before or... And profiles that are hard hard to do and people do well, um, but I, you know, maybe next year. Let's let's see. There were there are some good juices, and I can talk about it later. Um, but other than that, like it's there, there wasn't. I, I was a bit disappointed in the in the juice selection. Like um, I'm not. There are still the good vendors. Like there, there's still the few guys that come through. But I feel like there's this flood in the market of guys that just want to do fruit mixes and then put them on ice six months down the line and call it something on ice, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I've definitely seen that. Um, but, you know, it's such a bizarre thing because um, in my mind, and, you know, this is how things for me, my reality, right, is that these juices, which are the fruity mixes, that's got either menthol Culotta or WS23 in them are great for summertime. And now Vape Fest is pretty much on the cusp, moving into winter. So you would expect mm. to see more creamier profiles, more desserts, more custards, because that's the stuff that's going to start trending now again, in my mind. I don't know if I'm just 100% delusional, but that's no. what I'm thinking. No, so I, I, I could be a bit biased as well, but I'm a big dessert fan. Um, Majority of the juice I vape, let's say 95% of the juice is, is a dessert profile. And the other 5% is the occasional fruit. And then occasionally I also put that fruit on ice when it's really hot out, like 40 degrees. And you need that coolness. But I mean, we are heading, like it's been pretty cold in Cape Town recently. And it's getting colder. Uh, so we like we're really heading into winter, and you'd expect to see like a lot of custards. Um, I struggle to find custards. Like I bought, um, obviously, I bought killer custard, which is international, but this is how hard it was to find a local custard. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. That that to me makes no sense. Yeah, it's. And then you know, other than that, like they had like. Um, one of the guys had, which was also like he, he had a Nick, Nick Salt's juice, um, which he was selling, but it was three milligrams and six milligrams, which is kind of defeats the purpose of Nick Salt's. And he had Fortnite up and people were playing Fortnite. If they come first, then they get a free bottle of juice, which is pretty interesting. Um, I, I think that's pretty innovative. Uh, if more people can do that, then I can play more games while I'm at a vape fest. <laughs> Worth it. So, yeah. Uh, but that's that's in terms of gear. That's everything I got. Uh, besides, also then I I got some of this, which is Cotton Bacon Prime, because I think I've heard a couple of you guys raving on about it. And I'm still used to uh, vaping on on these, which is just the normal uh, Muji uh, Japanese cotton pads. Can you um, can you then, quickly oh, show us? Uh, have you opened up that Cotton Bacon Prime? I have, I have. Um, it looks a lot like, so I've seen what normal cotton bacon looks like, the cotton bacon. So I bought bits before, but I've seen the normal cotton bacon. It's still got the same strips. Um, this has obviously been used, but it's the so, same kind of strips. So just hold that next to your, your JC cotton pads. I just yeah. want to see the color, you know? <clears throat> I don't so, know if you can see so well, but it is whiter than, than this. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Mm. So, okay. But they say it's not bleached. Um, it says it's not bleached. Uh, I can't taste anything that says it's bleached. I have tasted uh, bleached cotton in my RDAs before, um, just to give it a go. So I do know what that tastes like. Um, it's not bad. Like It, it wicks nicely. Um, the squonking's been good. And it seems to be a holding color quite well because a lot of the stuff I vape, 
you can see this is now I've, i did this on saturday so it's two days of vaping on this and it's still got like it's not gunked up or anything it's it's decent cotton um i don't know if i would buy it again uh I, i've still got so much cotton pads but i mean it's it's vape fest so i thought i'd pick up just to try it out um and then oh yeah batteries of course batteries are not special but um we can talk about juice later on the stuff i got because i got some diy stuff as well okay so yeah that's that's gear for me richard anything new on your plate i got me a minion <laughs> every time <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Look, it looks like me. So, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a personalized Atty. It was designed. I sent them a portrait. They designed it <laughs> just, just, for me. Just hang on for just a moment here, okay? The airflow. All right. Let's just, I just want to see because now the mouth is the airflow. Is the eyes, eyes. Is the eyes airflow as well? The mouth is the bottom airflow. Mm -hmm. The eyes are the side airflow. And you can turn it. Uh, you can turn it that you only have bottom with no, with no side. Oh, with no side. You broke its neck. You broke its yeah. neck. <laughs> yeah, you broke you its like, neck. <laughs> you like twist its head around like Chucky the mad doll. And then it's... It doesn't chuck so much anymore. But it's, it's, it's actually a, a cloud monster, this thing. It chucks major clouds. Flavor's not, flavor's not bad either. You know, you kind of, you look at a thing like that and you, you kind of don't take it seriously at first. And then you vape it and you decide, you know, for something that looks like that, it actually doesn't <laughs> doesn't vape badly at at all. I mean, it's you know, it's an avocado. It's 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 an RDTA double coils, um, wicking holes on the side of the coils where you just dangle your wicks down in, mm. into the deck. It's a little bit more airy than the ever, especially with the with the with the side airflow and the bottom airflow open. But it's it's a decent vape. You know? But you've how big is it? So so sorry, go there. Twenty-five, I think. Twenty-five. Yeah, okay. 25. But you've you've had the limitless the RDTA. You've got the Avo, and now you've got the Spixi, right? So yeah. you you've got a good it, idea it, of RDTAs. Yeah. 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 Limitless probably the best overall, and I'd I'd say this and the Avo are pretty pretty close. This is the airiest one of the lot. The flavor's best on the limitless, but uh, yeah, it's it's a decent vape. I mean, it's. Watch all you know, the other fans just <laughs> use their shit now. <laughs> and it comes yeah. in yellow. It comes in yellow. It, yeah, it comes in yellow as well. Yeah, if you want to like, to like totally copyright infringing look, you can, you can get it in, in yellow. But um, no, I, I, was, I was actually pretty surprised. Um, it's very easy to deck to build on. It's like a, a velocity style um, deck. Good grub screws. Uh, tolerances are, are, are pretty good so you know and it's it's got nice knurling on it it's quite easy to you know good tolerances on the on the airflow it's just enough restriction to to turn so you know surprisingly well made and gives a good vape you know for something that looks like that <laughs> I think it also cheers you up. I'm sure it just cheers you up. You know what I mean? Like you go for a vape and you just, you can't not smile. <laughs> well, it's like, particularly when you look like the Atty, it's, it's kind of, it's like a soulmate. You know, it's like, this was designed for me. But talking uh, about cotton, um, at the Vape King sale, I got the, cotton candy collection which is uh, this stuff is vus 50 bucks for a big big roll yeah a big box of it oh that's not bad and uh yeah i mean it's like 200 bucks normally so it, it was so cheap i thought i'd 
I mean, I've got cotton for years now, but ugh, I thought I'd give it a go. Yeah. Cotton, cotton candy yes. collection. That's, How have that's, you found it? That's a straight up cotton. Eh? That's not a hybrid or anything. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's straight up cotton. It's good. I, I find it similar to, to cotton bacon. Uh, it's quite thick, quite, quite absorbent. Um, yeah, of, of, the, of the pure cottons I've tried, it's, it's right up there. I don't know if it's twice as good as bacon. It, it costs nearly twice as much. But, I mean, I got it on special. So, yeah, why not? Oh, check. So, um, juice e-liquids, like they were handing this out, right? So, we're like, we all grabbed the packet. They're like, yeah, take it. Like, we're like, cool. Um, I think it's free cotton. The guy screams back. He's like, it's just tissues. <laughs> they were handing out tissues to your mods. Like if troll. you overdrip stuff, right? Dude, I feel so trolled. Like everyone was grabbing it. Everyone thought they were getting free cotton for days. There are people like, can I have two? It's tissues. That was so funny to see. It's as well they told you. Yeah. I mean, imagine, <laughs> imagine if you wicked that. I mean, suddenly you've got no wick after like three drags on it i would have like looked at it and be like these are interesting wicks i think i could do a scottish roll on it and um, get a pretty decent <laughs> get a decent wick and then it set my mouth on fire you know yeah and then <laughs> open up a thread on e6 sa <laughs> totally you know just dissing it <laughs> you see other people doing the same <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst cotton i've ever tried <laughs> Yeah. And that that's the bumblebee tip on my drop. Oh nice. Those are cool. I saw I saw a couple of them. Like um I'm pretty sure the vape guy was there. If I, if I might be wrong, maybe it's the vape bros, but um I thought Bumblebee stand was there, so I was looking in, I bought a couple like I bought this blue one to match the mod. Um so the drip tips I, I like his drip tips um, from what I've seen. If these aren't, then I apologize. But I, I have looked at his drip tips before. They're pretty cool. And I like your one because it's like the nice obsidian. It's not obsidian, but it's black. And I, I like yeah. that. This is the black marble one. Mm. But it's really nice because it's not, it's not uh, low pro. I don't, I don't like low pro drips. Okay. I don't want my lips touching the atty ever. So this is good. It, uh, it's got decent height to it. Oh, yeah. That, that's the first thing I took off these nudges were those low pro trip tips which are like these like really but they're like they they're thinner bore which is which is kind of better than the the like lp1 mm. which is just this like really wide ball and um, they like well a thinner ball so, so it wasn't too bad but i can't i just can't do it where like half my mouth still open while i'm vaping because i'm like breathing air in with the vapor it, it's the same thing with this blitzen you know um it's really wide bore um, I mean, you know, I, I literally just look inside and I just look at my coil, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, you know, when you're vaping, it's like, it feels like, um, you know, there's air coming in from the sides. Cause, you know, otherwise I need to really kind of close it down. I don't know. My ones are a little bit awkward. Um, shall we move on to recipes? I mean... Oh. oh, yeah, the drop one, which I That's, also tried. Like, it's it's not bad, but I'm still like a big fan of this. That that is too short. I mean, that's too low yeah. pro for me. I I can't vape that. It means my lips are touching the edgy constantly. Yeah, I agree. Like, actually, like even this flave, it comes with like a. I'm sure I can fit a, a regular goon in here, but it's got this drip tip that's wide on the bottom. Um, and then it like goes into a normal 510. I should actually check if this goon fits. Nope. Okay, so it's wider than the goon. Um, but I, I like it's just so this is probably the thickest, like, or the, the biggest drip tip that I'll do, which is. I suppose like not exactly chuff cap, but it's it's not too bad. It's close to um, what the the five ten Dalrin is on the Avo. Hey Richard, you mixed up St. Louis butter cake, right? St. Louis butter cake, 
50 mils of it, which is highly unusual for me. This is a recipe that I, I came across. I was just uh, surfing around all the flavors um, one day. And uh, it's by Mr. Burgundy, which is always a good start because, uh, you know, he mixes up some, some pretty good stuff. I came across this St. Louis butter cake and I thought, let's have, a, let's have a look at this. And the moment I saw it, FW yellow cake, 3%, 5% LA cream cheese icing, 1.25% inuera custard, 1.5% uh, powdered sugar, and 0.25 cap super sweet. Well, it's not just that I have all those flavors, which is increasingly rare these days. It's just that I loved it from the moment I saw it. I mean, yellow cake, cream cheese, icing, and custard, what's not to like? So I mixed it up, gave it a good usual nine, 10 week steep, and this just blew me away from the moment that I, I started vaping it. It's an unrated recipe. I don't know what ATF mixers are doing, not mixing this recipe up and, and rating it because it is one of the best juices I've ever tasted. Just to look at Mr. Burgundy's notes, decadent, fresh baked, gooey butter cake straight from Gam Gam's oven. And he says it's a, it's a St. Louis staple. Uh, it's the preferred weapon of Midwestern women looking to mass kill their families via coronary blockage. <laughs> Confectioner's sugar, yellow cake mix, sugar, eggs, powdered sugar, cream cheese, and more sugar make up this wonderful treat. It's likely the most unhealthy food in existence, which is exactly why it's also <laughs> the most delicious. The old flavor health inversion principle, it's science. And I mean, what better flavor to use than FW yellow cake, right? So... It is basically, as, as he describes it, it's a very gooey, buttery, sugary, rich, decadent cake, which is right up my alley because it's a bakery and it's extremely rich and it's got LA cream cheese icing, which I love, and all the other flavors I love as, as well. Oh, powdered sugar is probably the only sort of fairly rare uh, flavor in it, but that, that's quite easy to get. And uh, I, I can't recommend this juice enough. Um, some of the other guys in the WhatsApp group have tried it and, uh, and have also loved it. The only thing is I would give it quite a lengthy steep. That alchemy of, of yellow cake and cream cheese icing does need a little bit of time to, to settle down. I would also, for this uh, second batch that I mixed, I left out the cap super sweet. The, the original, as is, was just a little bit too, too sweet for me. And he warns about it. He says, uh, Cap Super Sweet is needed here. If you've had um, gooey butter cake, you know how insanely sweet it is. I'm not going that far with 0.25%, but I want to get close. Well, if the real thing is sweeter than that juice, then it is really sickly sweet. So I left it out, and even without the sweetener, it's still, it's still fantastic. It's an easy recipe. It's only 6.5%, 6.25% if you don't put in the Cap Super Sweet. Pretty cheap and easily available um, uh, ingredients. So yeah, mix this one up. And if you're an ATF rated as well, this is this is a recipe that deserves to be to be rated. Yeah, definitely. I haven't got a chance to get around to mixing it, um, but I, I'm interested. Um, I did save it, like so when I do mix again, because I think the the only thing I've mixed which is like three weeks ago was the 500 mils or 600 mils of the juice um, and the one shots, but I'm definitely going to mix it up. Yeah. The only thing I don't have there is a powdered sugar. So I'll get that on my next order and then I can mix it up as well. Or, or use meringue or Tyrone. It'll, it'll give you a similar sort of vibe, probably not as good, but uh, it'll get you get you close. Guys have used, been using meringue on the WhatsApp group. And so, so what, mm. FA, FA meringue, right? Yeah, or TFA even. Okay. Uh, I, I feel TFA would work better because like, TFA's yeah. got a lot more of that powder, like meringue note to it than I find FA does. Okay. Um, but yeah. Oh awesome. man, anywhere a custard with yellow cake. You just gotta love that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Daniel? All right. Okay. Um okay, well, I'm just gonna start from the top. So um I did get this bad boy. Okay. Grand Slam. Um so this is one of the juice I'll talk about is um it's a tennis biscuit uh, profile, which I think Joel spoke about before. It's like a homage to it. Um 
it's damn close. Like it is pretty much spot on and it's got like this honey note to it, the sweet honey note. Um, I, I like this stuff so much. So we went out like after I bought it, this is the only juice I'd bought up until about two o'clock. I bought one juice. I tried it, went back inside and then bought myself another 60 mil. So I got two grand slams. Uh, because it, it is that good. And then um, I picked up the sample pack as well. So it got me another 15 mils of Grand Slam. Um, so I stocked up on this. Like to me, um, I think that Frosties uh, craze that happened, like where everyone was buying Frosties, um, I think this might overtake it. Just just my opinion. Um, it's, it's on par with that whole craze. Like I think a lot of people are going to like this. Um, it's damn good. Like, and it's not heavy on the coconut. It's not like obvious coconut. It's the perfect, like subtle coconut that you get in a tennis biscuit. And then I got, let me see. This is, so Alpha, so Frosted Flakes um, from Emissary Elixirs. Um, I tasted this last, last Vape Fest and I, I didn't buy it. I forgot to buy it. And then I was pretty disappointed when I got home that I didn't buy it. And then it took me a year to buy it again because I don't buy juice that often. So this stuff's good. It's like a caramel uh, frosted flakes, which is good. Um, and then I picked up his, I think it's called corn. Yes, corn, which everyone's raving about. It's like an aromatic rice and lychee with coconut milk. Um, it's sort of like on that vibe of mango sticky rice, but with lychee, um, it's kind of their own thing. But it's if you like mango sticky rice, then you'll definitely like this because it's, it's on par with it. Um, and th this stuff's pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it. So I picked that up. Then I got these, which is quite interesting. I believe this is Wiener Vape Co. Yeah, the Wiener Vape Company. Uh, it's their new stuff, which is Rack City. And I heard a lot of people raving on about their Done to Death and their Masked Bandit. So Done to Death is like a strawberry milkshake. Masked Bandit is a chocolate, uh, mint, mint chocolate profile. Um, I, luckily, you get to try the juices before because I was a bit worried it's going to have the FA balloon but it doesn't like it's a really good uh, mint chocolate um i would say it's like it's it's on par there with bombshell which is which is bombshell to me is one of my favorite mint chocolates um in terms of commercial juice but this stuff's pretty good then for some reason when i bought juices from juicy joe um because i got tots as well which i've tried before and i was like um i like it like i can vape it so i picked up a bottle um on special uh, it's not it's not my favorite juice, but I, I definitely like this. Um, what is, what is the this. Tots profile? Sorry, Daniel. What is the it's jelly, jelly Tots. Cream it's, a, it's Jelly Tots. It is, it's Jelly Tots icing and cookies. Okay. So it's almost like those church bazaar cookies that you got like with the Mari biscuit and the icing and the, the cookies on it. Uh, okay, yeah, the, yeah, Tots. So it's, it's pretty good. Like I, I like it. Um, there, there are a couple of stuff that I'm like, I would have changed, but it's, all in all, I'd say nine out of 10. I mean, I'm just being picky if I say um, like there's a couple of things I don't like. And um, then they gave me this, which is quite interesting because I didn't even know this was coming, which is, it's called Noggy, Noggy Rock, which is Mike's Mega Mixes. It's his new juice. They gave like a free sample away, um, which these bottles aren't glass. This is plastic, which, which is crazy to me because I thought this was glass, um, which is a plastic dropper bottle. Um, and this is also, it's, it's not bad. Obviously, it's, it's eggnog. Um, I tasted a couple of it. It's quite like on, heavy on the spice. It's got that cinnamon, um, like cinnamon nutmeg taste to it. But it's, it's pretty creamy. It's got a bit of like an alcoholic like note to it, or alcohol note to it, which is good. And then um, I think I spoke about this before. It's just like a mango and ice that they gave me. Somehow it's this five plus one mixed flavor. I don't know what that means, but they gave me this for free. Um, then I picked this up as well, which is whoop. It's a strawberry whipped cream. Um, cause I'm a big fan of strawberry, anything. So this is good. Like I, I tasted this before, but, um, when I went back now, I, I preferred it than what I tasted a year ago. Uh, killer custard, pretty good. Just a, a like a pretty like rich, um, eggy custard. Uh, it's decent. And then today these arrived cause I bought the sample pack of these. So I tasted them before they arrived which is the whole new goodies range, um, which is the sugar dots. Uh, I've, I've tasted this. It's spot on jelly dots, like down to the, the little sugar granule on it. It's spot on jelly dots, like knocked it out of the ballpark on this. Um, and then 
I don't know if you've ever had like those apple lollipops or apple fizzes, but apple fizz is like spot on that apple profile. It's not, it's not like Fuji apple. This stuff is candied, like candy all around candy apple. It's perfect as is. And then my favorite is this mango lassi. Like, and I think I've spoken about, I, I don't like mango, but this stuff is like a mango smoothie. It tastes like it. It's got the perfect like full cream yogurt base to it with a really sweet mango. Um, it's sweet and well. Uh, I think like this one is like my, my knock out of the park on the show. This and Grand Slam. Mm. Um, and that's not because I, I like Mr. Hardwick's or we know Joel. He knocked it out of the park on these two juices, like particularly. Nice. Yeah. Yes, uh, you, oh wait! How, how much? How much commercial did you buy there? Like in liters? Like are we uh, sitting at like a liter? I'd a say liter. we're sitting at, a, at about a liter. But then I got this, which is the My Man one shot. Um, this makes four hundred mils of juice. It's a sixty mil bottle, um, which is also like a strawberry milkshake and burst. I think this makes one hundred and fifty mils of juice. If I'm not mistaken, but it's the burst one shot, which I believe is the original burst recipe before the reformulation. Um, Are you sure about that? Because what the original burst recipe was incredible. You know what I mean? I could mm. not get enough of that. It, you know, and the, the the new one is completely different. I don't know what what the you know what the deal is there. No, this smells like the, the old one. This is that like beachy's beach yes. vibe. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, which I've got I've got an old yeah, I've got an old bottle here, so I can actually just if it'll open, fucking thirty more bottles, dude. Yeah, no, it's it's this. It's it's spot on this one. Like <laughs> all right. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, this. yeah, you gotta do it the right way. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah but it's it's spot on this and then i found something interesting so joel's whole new line comes with these new chubby gorilla bottles which i just want to talk about it's like a, a proper like normal spout it's not that sharp spout that was on the old ones and they reformulated the caps and everything like these caps are much bigger than the old chubby gorillas and the like the ring can't get this off um Wait, I've got one here. But these new Chubby Gorilla bottles are like pretty good. Okay, this doesn't come off either. So these things don't really slide off anymore. That's revolutionary. So if I'm pouring my juice, they don't come off. And it's got like a, a thinner spout. So it's easier to fill up like um, bottles with. Um, and like it even, even f fills this up. Which is quite interesting because they give you like a needle nose for this. Um, but I, I did buy myself just 200 more bottles, obviously for the one shots to fill up, even though I have, but because they were on sale, I wanted to try it. But when you buy it, it comes with a cap in here. You can't get this cap out until you close the bottle on it, um, which means that it will close, like a, make a proper seal. Um, but they seem to have reformulated like the whole bottle technology, which they said they were coming. I think these are the V3s, which is pretty cool. That is cool. But do you, do you battle to then get the, the spout out of the neck of the bottle? That is why I bought it, so I can find out. Um, okay. Because obviously I've got that knife technique where I run like a Victorian Knox knife underneath, and then I just pop it with my thumb and the whole thing comes off. So I've got the bottles now. I'll let you know once I've like needed to fill them up again. So, because I'm hoping it does, because they they they're better bottles in terms of, um, I think they also mentioned like they know about people losing 120 mils of juice when they fill up, like it just spills on their lap. Um, so they reformulated the bottles. So I, I'm I'm hoping it comes off um, easy, but I'm also like kind of glad they reformulated the old style bottles as well. That's why I go for these ones. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with Richard over there. I'll wait for V4 to come out and then I might switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a rumor or not a rumor. I think Wayne spoke about it. There's a new DIY chubby gorilla coming out, which is specifically made for DIY where from what I can see in the pictures, uh, I can't show you on this, but um, yeah, 
basically the spout comes out like it's got its own it's got the insert and then it's got another insert with like o-rings on that comes out you fill your juice up you close it so it's not like this press fit type of thing which is quite interesting okay cool so then um on notes um i i've been um messing around with Perlim condensed milk, right? I've got a couple of notes here. So in one of my recipes, I used this. So um, the advice on um, Google, other Reddit, and on ELR is so in a in a mix is to mix this up at um, or to mix it with a recipe at 1.5. Um, you know, I was going for custard that that has more of a sweet dairy note to it. So that's why I was really interested to try Perlim condensed milk. And um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it, you know. Um, so I find it, you know, the notes that I have here is um, it's, it's really, it's one of those versatile flavors. Um, exactly the same as, as some of the other creams will be, right? Um, but I would say almost the same kind of versatility as you would see from something like OOO Milky Undertone. Okay, but this is just a smidge sweeter. All right, so if, if you do the back of the hand, the hand test, you can already just with two with OO Milky Undertone and with this one, there's similarities, right? But this, it's, it just seems like a little bit sweeter for me. Okay, of course, um, if you're going to do this in a single mix, it's going to be a little bit bland. I wouldn't do anything like that. You would want to use this as part of a recipe. Um, but um, even the back of the hand test is pretty smooth um, and it blends extremely, extremely well with, um, with other things like custards and milkshakes, you know, with some VBIC. Um, I also believe you can use this and I haven't done this. I'm interested to do this. Um, you know, I know everybody uses uh, FA Fresh Cream in um, to widen up some fruity profiles, but I think it, it, it's worth trying Perlim as well because it has that sweetness to it and it has that, you know, dairy milkness to it as well. Um, but it doesn't, I don't think it mutes at uh, about 2%. It can go up to about 2% without throwing the recipe completely out of whack. So, um, and also it's not too heavy, you know. Um, I didn't find Perlim to be that heavy but I only used it up to about two percent I won't use a cream in a recipe much higher than that anyway right so that's what I have um, and then let's see what I said here yeah that's pretty much it um, I think I think it's worth giving this a go in um, a fruity recipe um, a custard recipe um, and, and, you know, if, if you're making any milkshakes as well, you can definitely, for me, this is, you know, if I look at creams, my favorite ones, um, and I'm going to talk about, so, so it's F a fresh cream and it's, you know, and then I like to use, um, a milky undertone from OOO. And then this is another one for me is Perlim condensed milk. I just think it will go really well with mixes because it has that sweetness to it. Would you um, say that it would work well in a like vanilla custard, like an ultra ultra mal vibe? That's, that's what I'm going for right now. Um, so I've been, I've been playing around with that. I've been playing around with, um, especially with vanilla custard V1 cap and some perlim, right? I've been playing around with, so with dairy milk, I've been playing around with uh, a milky undertone and with perlim. And I'm trying to find, you know, the best ratio, um, to, you know, um, between them. So at this point in time, I think a little bit of perlim and a little bit of dairy milk gives you a beautiful, um, you know, like a milky a dairy milk undertone, you know, um, and, a, and a nice amount of sweetness and smoothness. 
Um, I still have to figure out a uh, uh, milky undertone. I haven't played around with that a lot, but if you just mix that, if you mix dairy milk and you mix um, perlum condensed milk and vanilla custard V1 cap, it's, ex it's going to be rich. It's going to be a rich mm. mix if you're looking for deep custard. Um, but I know there's a lot of people out there that like that kind of thing. Yeah, so, so what I started doing, right, to chase my, like, ultra mal recipe, like, or, or just chasing something close to it is I started looking at clone, like, recipes, like, real recipes um, to see, you know, what are the common ingredients between the clones, like, what do they go after? And all of them seem to use condensed milk. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they use condensed milk in normal ultra mal as well, um, just based on the, the ingredients at the back. So I... I feel like if you have a good condensed milk, you'd be at least 40% the way there. Then you just need to get the right vanilla. Yeah, hundred percent. I also, you know, that for me, that was, um, cause when I, you know, in my sense of custard, I'm not talking about, um, I'm talking about a cool drinking custard, right? And if you drink that, if you take a, a normal cool drinking custard, you turn it around and you look at the flavors at the back of the custard, you know, um, or what the ingredients is, you know, they talk about buttermilk over there, you know, and um, I don't know, you know, I haven't tried a buttermilk flavor, but if I taste it, it kind of gives me the idea of condensed milk with some, you know, some custard mixed together. So that it, it kind of works. There's still an element missing that I'm trying to figure out, but I'll get there. Uh, awesome. I mixed up FW yogurt, which as you can see is pretty much colorless. I was alerted to this flavor by i think it was an episode of mix life um where concrete and Coppel were talking about about yogurts and concrete has much the same view that i have of, of yogurts that i love them in real life but i'm not sure that i want to be vaping them uh, this is quite a common thing as well people are saying on on reddit that they've never found anything with a yogurt that they can't get better with a cream and so Concrete was saying that, and then uh, Coppell, as, as far as I can remember, said that he quite enjoyed using the FW yogurt because it doesn't have that very sharp, tangy note that you get from the Greek yogurts like Flavora and, and TFA. He said he found it quite a mild and workable, almost like an unsweetened cream. So that's that sounded quite good to me. So I I bought it and mixed it up at, at 5%. I looked on ATF, it's, it's used at an average of 3.5, so it doesn't seem to be the, the strongest flavor. There are a handful of recipes for it on ATF, two of which are by Skittles, who use it quite low, 0.5% in the one recipe, 1% in the other. But he used it in his one recipe just to give cheesecake a little bit of a kick. And I think that's what this type of flavor is going to do very, very well. What I got from it straight away was a fairly bland, quite neutral, unsweetened, just a texturizer. It's like a neutral cream with just the tiniest little bit of yogurt tang to it. I was reminded immediately of when I used to make my own unflavored, unsweetened yogurt. I used to put it in a yogurt maker, put in a spoon of um, yogurt culture, then you heat the milk up to a certain temperature and you leave it for like a week and then it forms the yogurt and when i used to open the yogurt maker that flavor that comes out that unsweetened unfruity flavor is pretty much what i got from from this now i'm not as people know i'm not the greatest fan of of sweetener and a lot of juices call for fruit and cream mixes that are naturally sweet even if you don't add sweetener so i think this will have a lot of application where you're using sweet fruits, you want that sort of creamy uh, base and, and background for them to sit on, but you don't want it adding sweetness and you don't want it adding um, too much brightness or too much dairy. Uh, I think this will be a very, very workable flavor. It's not a Greek yogurt. It's just a normal, highly processed 
unsweetened, unflavored yogurt. But it does it does its textural job, and um, I think it'll be be very good just for filling out uh, fruit mixes. So if you like the idea of yogurt, but you know Greek yogurts are a bit too tangy and and uh, cheesy for you, maybe give FW a go. It's I pretty much concur with Capel on this. This is a, a versatile and and useful flavour. <laughs> So, um, you know, with fruity mixes, um, if, if you add that in, you would also add it really low, like 0.5% maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it depends what else you're adding with it. If you've got, um, you know, if you've got something like, like Vbic, but you don't want that, that sweetness from it, I would probably cut the Vbic in half and add this the same as, as the Vbic. It'll cut the sweetness slightly. It'll still give you that body, but also it adds just that slight tang where if you, if you don't want your fruit candied, if you wanted to have that little bit of tartness that you, that you would get from actual fruit, this would just help to balance it and it, it would kind of pull a shake out of that highly sweetened, highly processed um, sort of vibe into a probably a more realistic um, Okay. One, but it, it, it's not going to go tangy on you. I mean, you, you're not going to get a Greek yogurt out of this, whatever you do. So, no, because because yeah. I'm interested in that. Um, you know what that tang would do to some fruits. You know, um, what it would, how it would boost it, um, how it would bend it. You know what I mean? Um, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Um. Skittle's suggestion is also very good. Use this to cheesecake. To just tang it up a little bit. I don't think it'll work that well with cap, but probably the the, the sweeter cheesecakes like the Pyrilim cheesecakes, mm -hmm. you can probably just get a little bit more of that, you know, that slightly tangy cheesecake without going full on nasty nasty tang that you get with with like you yeah, can so get with a cap. Yeah. I've like I had an apricot like pretty much apricot peach yogurt recipe that I, that I worked on. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing, cause it was, it's a peach yogurt drinking yogurt. So I was going for like the go good flavor. Um, and I think I had creamy yogurt at the time and it, it, it's the closest fit I could get at that time to work with like a drinking yogurt. But this sounds like it, it's going to work better in that kind of profile where I can get like that milkiness, but still get a bit of the tang to represent the yogurt without overrunning it with that sour note the only the only fault I, I would give for this is that for a yogurt it's a little bit dry i don't know if i'm using it too high but it it doesn't have that that sort of moist juiciness that you that you get from a yogurt so i would think that if you pair this with a dairy with a moist dairy uh, maybe even a sweet dairy and you just use this to add a little bit of tang, but you use the dairy to give this that little bit of moistness that it needs. You might get some juiciness from the fruit, like if you put in juicy strawberry or something like that, you, you might get it from there. But on its own, it's a little bit dry, so it's, it's going to need help, in a, in a, especially in like a drinking yogurt type of, type of application. Okay. Cool. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, we spoke about vape fest, Daniel. Um, so we pretty much at the end of our topics, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's one more thing. Um, so thanks to everyone that came out and said hello and like said they watched the show. Um, it's it's pretty cool to see some support. Like people are saying, "Hey, you, you're from that scumbag show," <laughs> um, and and not in a rude way. So um, thanks to to everyone that's watching the show and everyone that came to say hello. Um, it's really cool. So, um, you know, cause, um, they, you know, if I look at some of the shows, um, the, the views are not that high, but you know, if I'm listening to what people are saying is everybody is downloading it. Right. So yeah. I think there's a lot of people downloading the show and listening. How many people did actually recognize you? Like at least I'd say 20 people, like a couple wow. of the vendors as well. Like a lot of them like, Hey, you look familiar. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I, I don't say anything. Cause I'm like, I, I'm not one to really look for like attention or be like, Oh, I'm YouTube famous or something. Um, cause I'm, I'm not like that hot headed, but, um, yeah. <laughs> then they'd be like, Oh, you're from that. You do that show. You're on YouTube. Right. And I'm like, Oh yes. 
Um, so like, a, like a couple of people, like, Hey, you, you're Daniel from the show. So it's, it's quite cool to see people like supporting us. That's cool, man. Meeting a few like people that like the show and they're, they're quite impressed with like the in-depth, um, like news section, mm. which is quite interesting. Like they, they, uh, I think it's cause we, you, we tend to go a bit like in depth on it and ask like different questions, which is kind of cool. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Thank you to everybody that is watching. Um, you know, I, I do see a lot of people in the forums and, and on YouTube, you know, saying stuff and, and making comments and, um, yeah, thanks Daniel for, for bringing that up. But, yeah. um, that pretty much wraps up the show. So yeah, thanks for watching and, um, we'll have another show next week. Cheers guys. Yeah. Cheers.